Hello to everyone. I came back, Grandmaster Tony Kesani Kidze from Georgia, and we have new topic, Grandmaster's planning. Uh, we will talk in this course how Grandmasters make decision in middle games, when we should find the best moves, plans, ideas. I will explain different type of ideas and uh, uh, I hope you will like and enjoy this course. I will start first with the, uh, with the game between Janowski and Rubinstein, Akiba Rubinstein. Probably many of you knew about this wonderful player. He was very talented and he has a very nice idea in chess. And I believe that if you want to become Grandmaster, you should know his repertoire, his ideas and his chess understanding was really huge. Uh, and uh, the second video I will show you how I used uh, Rubinstein's idea in my game. So let's start. White is Janowski David and black is Rubinstein Akiba. So game was played many years ago but opening it's still very interesting so they played uh, four knights opening with the move bishop b5 bishop b4 castle castle d3 bishop takes d6 and bishop g5 so this was very famous line many years ago like 100 years ago uh, and even uh, nowadays, it, it is still very popular, this variation. Uh, and when I was a child, to be honest, my coach, he uh, teached me this variation with the move what Rubinstein played, Queen e7. And what was the idea here uh, to play move Queen e7? Uh, normally, white makes bishop g5, very unpleasant pin. As black has no dark square bishop on e7, white wants to use this pin. And queen e7 is the idea to move the knight on d8 after on e6 and try to attack this bishop. When bishop will leave, we continue the plan with knight f4 and knight g6. And after bishop backs on g5, like knight comes on g6, h6. Or we have another option, knight d8, knight e6, knight f4, first play h6, and then move knight on g6, and uh, after that, black will be not anymore under p. Yes, this was the one of the main famous plan in this variation, uh, but uh, modern line is more uh, you get the more games if you check in database the move knight e7. So knight e7 idea is that knight is going on g6 directly without queen e7 and without losing so many tempos like knight d8, knight e6, knight f4, knight g6 is too many moves and modern line is with knight e7, knight g6 directly. That period this was not good move as uh, they were thinking that bishop takes f6, g takes f6 and black's king's king stru pawn structure is very weak. Uh, but it's not like that. It's possible to play because black is going to play king h8, rook g8 and to attack in the open line somewhere they can push the f4, f5 pawn. So it's playable. You can check many games in database and you will realize that it's very interesting positions. The other plan here from white side is um, most playable move knight h4, which stops knight g6, but still uh, black plays knight g6, taking and here is two moves, hg or fg, both of these played very many games. 
So this is playable variation from black side. You can check uh, this line. Uh, we will continue the game. So queen e7 was played. Queen d2. This move what Janowski played, of course, it's not the best here. Because uh, the best move here is rook e1. And after knight d8, d4. This is the line uh, where white gets advantage, I think. Uh, because the idea is to move the bishop on f1. And bishop goes on c1. This is a wonderful idea. Uh, the plan here is to come... Uh, on a3 and to make pressure on this square so for example if black will play rook d8 white can play bishop a3 and now white wants to take the pawn it's like forced to play c5 and after c5 black white can close the center and after knight goes uh, white plan is to go back then maybe put c4 g3 knight goes here f4 and because of central pawn structure and two bishops and uh, attacking possibilities on king side, white gets better position. And that's why last period this line seems to be better for white. But okay, queen d2, like I told you, it was not the best move. Knight d8. Bishop c4. The idea is probably Janowski played bishop c4 because... Uh, he wanted to exchange this knight to take on e6 and to and to keep uh, this pin with dark square bishop. But here Rubinstein he played bishop e6. Bishop b3 was played. Bishop takes b3. A b and knight e6. Okay, what White did is that pawn structure now is improved. Uh, white took a b. But, okay, black continues their plan with knight coming on f4 and g6. So nothing changed here. Bishop g3 was played in the game. And probably it's not the best move because it was better to try to keep bishop on h4 and to attack in the center. Probably in this case black still plays knight f4, knight g6. Position is about equal. But okay, when Janowski played bishop g3, knight h5 directly comes, now d4 and knight f4. Bishop takes f4, knight takes f4. So we get, like, seems to be equal position because uh, in the board we have king, queen, two rooks and knight, same for white, pawn structure is like same, everything is same. White has a slightly better structure in the center because they are more active, but black has very, very good knight on f4, and it's very difficult for white side to be uh, under pressure of this knight in the game uh, because black is going to play queen f6, queen g6 somewhere to improve the queen's position and make some kind of attack on g2. Uh, so it's not uh, easy to continue with this knight uh, on f4. That's why white played directly g3 to make black to go back. And now black idea is open f line. Why? It's very important because after g3 white makes, white has a weak, weak uh, square on f3, weak square on f2, and black wants to play f5, and if white will take on f5, rook takes f5, and the second rook comes on f8, and they attack on f line. So next move, what Janowski played, queen d3, is very clever. It stops f5 move, and on uh, and uh, Rubinstein played also very interesting, queen d6. Still, he is going to play f5. Here was very, very interesting and nice plan already. Uh, so, like I told you, our topic will be mid-game plans. And in this game, there was many nice uh, plans. That's why I choose uh, for you uh, uh, this game in our first video in this course. So, uh, how you should find the moves in mid-game and how you should find what to do here. So, first of all, you should think what your opponent wants to do. 
it's clear after the move queen goes on e6 black is going to play f5 right after f5 the f line will be opened uh, and our knight on f3 will be under pressure and will be very bad piece so you should think normally before to prepare against f5 and here Jadnowski played very nice move knight d2 why this is nice move and what is the idea of this move i can explain so f5 was played d5 white closed the center after queen d7 they took and knight came on e4 it blocks everything no more attack on f3 and uh, f2 pawn is well protected rook f8 and rook e3 now it's black's turn how to find here the plan from black side it seems very interesting to play rook h5 with some kind of idea to jump the queen on h3 but it's not makes any success because white can play just simple move f3 and when queen comes here on h3 to attack on h2 white can just protect h2 with the queen e2 and there will be not enough pieces to make some kind of attack so that's why this plan is not working so then what to do how to find the move here uh, first of all this kind of positions you should think uh, what is the best piece from white side here of course the knight on e4 which protects f2 square and which blocks e5 pawn and our knight on g6 is doing absolutely nothing so uh, rubinstein found beautiful idea he played knight e7 with the idea king h8 knight g8 and knight f6 probably you understand why he did it so he wants to exchange his bad knight against opponent's very beautiful knight on e4 so white played rook d1 king h8 c4 knight come on g8 f3 and knight f6 so it's done our plan and idea to exchange the knights it's already black managed it so rook f1 knight takes e4 and here was very important moment by the way to take on e4 with pawn is not possible because of rook takes f1 so two moves rook takes e4 and queen takes e4 normally the best option was probably to take with rook but Janowski took with queen i can understand why he took with queen because he was thinking that black is going to attack on king side and queen e4 protects everything rook e3 protects f3 and everything is okay and this is the moment in this game where when uh, rubinstein found the idea very famous idea by the way uh, but janowski was not ready uh, about again is this idea so normally um, it seems to be again rook h5 queen h3 or some kind of g5 h5 and to try to attack and to make pressure on f3 or g3 as black has small advantage because of e5 pawn and because of open f line where black is attacking uh, and probably anoski white player he were thinking that Black is going to attack on king side. And suddenly Rubinstein played amazing idea. He played queen d8. Okay, when he played queen d8, I was sure that Janowski thought that his uh, opponent is going to play somewhere queen g5. And he tried to prepared again is queen g5 and he just played queen g4 
and he was waiting queen g5 just to exchange the queens and probably offer draw or something like that and suddenly look what happened queen b8 it's really beautiful idea queen is going on a7 so not on king's side he's going on queen's side then after a7 he attacks the rook he comes on c5 so from d7 he mon he make maneuver queen d8 queen b8 queen a7 queen c5 just look it again one more time how beautiful this idea is to maneuver the queen on another side when opponent was not ready totally okay of course with this idea he cannot win the game but uh, the continue was like to come with queen on b4 and now uh, black is going to push somewhere a5 a4 and make some weaknesses on king queen side first rook f6 because maybe black will need the rook on uh, a line so f5 rook will be under attack so it's much better to keep the rook on f6 queen d3 was played king g8 because in the end game also some position king can come uh, quickly so before black has time uh, Rubinstein wants to bring the king queen c3 and a5 queen takes b4 a takes b4 it's normal now we went in some kind of rooks and game when Rubinstein played better than Janowski and black won this game b takes c3 rook takes c3 rook a8 and here in this moment Mm. Janowski start to make mistakes of course he should play here definitely the move c5 to open c line to exchange some pawns and to have the active rook c3 which can come in the future uh, if well, black will jump somewhere here white can take take come with check on c8 and this rook becomes active and normally the, no, this game should finish draw but uh, Janowski played bad move, king h3. I can understand this move, why he played king h3. Because uh, normally we know that when we are in end game, our king should be active and he wanted to push the king on g4 in some future plans, f4 maybe or something like that. and. He thought that if rooks will exchange, then king will be active. But it's too early. Because on the board we have two rook pairs for both sides. And king on g4 uh, will be under big uh, difficulties if black will make some kind of attack on it. And it happens in this game. So first of all, of course, Janowski played b6. Uh, sorry, Rubinstein played b6. He blocked c5 now it's a bit difficult to manage c5 because if you play b4 with the idea c5 somewhere you will get the move rook a4 and b4 will be very weak pawn so that's why probably Janowski continued his plan he put the king on g4 but now rook came rook b2 probably the move the idea of Rook b2 is b4 c5, but now look, king h7, b4, and king g6. Already king g4 will get some problems, because now if you play the move c5, then white can just, black can just play rook d1, rook d4, or rook d5, and black will win the pawn. So that's why white decide to play rook bd3 protect f3 pawn and wait a bit but now rook f5 came rook c2 white is waiting but after rook h1 now white is going to lose the pawn why because black idea is rook g5 check and when king will move on h3 rook h5 check and pawn on h2 will be lost if white will protect it directly with this move, then h5 check and f3 pawn will be lost. So that's why Janowski played f4, but f4 means already 
quick pawn on f4 and white lost this pawn check and rook g4 f4 pawn is losing okay white tried to survive somehow this game of course only pawn is missing and it's rooks end game always is some kind of chances if white will play c5 in the future open the c line then they get the chances but right moment c5 is not possible because b4 pawn is yanking white played king d3 and i really like how rubinstein played here of course here is many moves like g5 g4 to manage to attack with this pawn and to make the past pawn but he played nice move rook f3 check and rook b3 because he killed all white counterplay chances to open c5 and to make cont play so b4 pawn is hanging now and when you play b5 if white will play b5 then black can start to push the pawns they have extra pawn and they are going to win this game so after rook b3 white played very good by the way he played uh, Janowski played rook f2 check because he wants to make cont play to come with the rook on f7 but black not allowed it of course king g6 again check king h6 and now b5 at least what white uh, did is that black king is uh, far a bit he went back on h6 but still position is winning for black rook f3 the idea is to push g5 g4 king e4 rook f6 and of course g5 rook a2 rook a7 it was the last chance to attack on c7 pawn and here of course his move seems to be rook f7 but still look how rubinstein did it first he played check and then rook f7 so he protects totally any kind of attacks on c7 and it's easy plan for black is to play in the future g5 h5 king g5 g3 and make past pawn there and winning position c5 last chance for white because for example if white will make mistake blunder then after b6 suddenly white is winning and he has the same idea when d takes c5 then c d6 is coming but here rook d7 makes spin so white is not able to take pawn they should take with rook this pawn and then rook d6 check and king d4 but this is the moment when even black has two pawn up they should play careful because only move one move like normal move g4 and suddenly after the move rook c6 white can win this game because if you take rook c6 pawn take c6 and pawn become the queen very soon and the only move seems to be rook g6 and here king f5 makes black force to take on c6 and again white is winning so even remember if you have two pawn three pawn more in rook's end game you should be careful not to allow your opponent to make some kind of con play and this check what rubinstein played in this position rook d4 is very good because he can give b6 pawn take h2 pawn and then put the rook under the b pawn and it, of course it will be totally winning position because even even if white will take both kings queen side pawns b6 and c5 and white black will take h2 black has winning position because two connected pawn and rook is guaranteed to win against rook and pawn but uh, here after king f5 very nice and clever move h4 because if black will white will give check then king will go on h5 and after taking like i told you rook d2 with the idea rook h2 and when white will play rook b8 with the idea rook h8 checkmate so now we should not make such a kind of blunder remember in rook's end game very often is a check which wins the game now white king should leave the f line they should go here here or there doesn't matter 
then we take of course h2 pawn then we go on b2 we will block this pawn and we will have two connected pawn which will win the game so that's why probably Janowski tried last his chance to make some kind of checks but again remember this move check make the king far and then c4 was played check king g7 king g6 so we can give b6 pawn we don't care about this like i told you but the main is to take h3 pawn and here white resign i hope you liked this game and before we will finish uh, once again i will remind you the plans what is our main topic of this course in this game was we meet uh, three or even more i think four very important uh, plans in middle games one okay it is a famous queen e7 with the idea knight d86 but the second moment in this game was when Janowski found a very nice idea, knight's maneuver and played knight d2. It was preparation against f5 and he got his idea to put the knight on e4. The third moment was very nice, knight e7, when Rubinstein exchange this his bad knight against uh, white's knight on e4 and the final the beautiful idea the queen's maneuver which makes many problems to white in next video i will show my game like i promised how i used one of this idea in my game so see you soon bye bye